guys, my name is Kathy, and thank you so much for coming to my channel, Crafty Kathy. Hey, if this is the first time that you've ever been to my channel, I'd like to say a big welcome, and thank you so much for stopping by to spend some time with me. And if you guys are returning, you know I love you from the bottom of my heart. In our first DIY, we're going to use some Christmas sheet music, and I wanted to stain it. Now, I'm going to stain mine with coffee, and I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to do that. You basically just have to submerge your paper in coffee for 5 to 10 minutes. Now, I used instant coffee, but it does not matter if you use instant, regular, cold, or hot. This piece of paper just came out of the coffee, and as you see, it's still very wet. Now, I let mine air dry for just a few minutes. I don't think that you have to. The big important part is how you dry it. You're going to dry it in a preheated oven on 200 for 5 to 10 minutes, or you're going to use a hair dryer. Now, I used a hair dryer, and it turned out perfectly fine. I thought that I would just throw that in real quick because a lot of people were asking me how you stain paper with coffee. So I've got an 8x10 canvas frame from the Dollar Tree. I had already pulled off the canvas, so all we have is just the frame. I'm going to give it one coat of Waverly's Antique Wax, and then I'm just going to wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. After everything is finished up and dried, I'm going to take my little finger sander and go around and give this a really good sanding. I've got to cut my sheet music down so it will fit in the 8x10 the way I want it to. I wanted to use some cardstock behind this, so I just picked my cardstock out, I cut it out, and then I'm just going to use a glue stick to put my sheet music to my cardstock. Next, I take the cardstock and I'm just going to glue it to some foam core board that I had got at Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to lay everything out the way I want it and just glue it down with a little bit of hot glue. I picked out this gorgeous plaid ribbon, but it was way too thick. It was going to hide the words, Oh Holy Night. So what I did was just cut off a small strip of it. I rolled it over on itself and glued it down. This is going to make it so much easier to work with. So now I just take my ribbon and I glue it around the top of the wreath. And then I'm going to take and glue my ribbon to my picture frame. Then I took some of the red Dollar Tree pit berries, and I'm just going to wound them all the way around my wreath. And since the pit berries have wire inside them, you don't even have to glue anything down. Now I take and glue my wreath to my picture with just a couple little dots of glue. I don't want that wreath bobbing around. I take one of these little pre-made bows that I got from Walmart. They are red and black plaid, and I'm just going to glue that right to the top of my wreath. And then I go through and I pick out a small red bell and I glue that right in the center. Now I have two little picks that I purchased from Amazon, and they're so adorable. So I'm going to put them on the top with just a little bit of glue. Then for the finishing touch, I take just a little bit of my white chalk paint and I'm going to just barely put it on my branches and on my pine cones and just around my picture because it makes a beautiful snowy look. And that's all there was to this project. This turned out so pretty and I'm just going to display it on an easel. I 
I'd like to stop for just a moment and ask you guys to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. It really, really helps my channel and it helps YouTube to notice me a little bit more. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd love to have you as part of my family. Hit that red subscribe button and then there's a bell beside it. And if you click that and click the word all, YouTube's going to let you know every time I upload a video. Ooh. This one is really simple and it turns out really pretty. I've just got one of those new rounds that comes from the Dollar Tree. And I want to say they're probably about 12 inches. They might be 14, but I'm thinking more like 12. Anyways, I gave it a quick little sanding before I gave it one coat of my black chalk paint. Now, I'm going to try out the vinyl that comes from the Dollar Tree. I've got this red and black plaid that I think is beautiful. My thought was to put some on the bottom and some on the top and my letters in the middle. Since it had this sticky back to it, it was so easy to use and it was simple to put down on my little plaid. I just laid it across the bottom, cut off the excess, and I'm gonna use my little finger sander here to just straighten up the edges. And then I thought that it would probably be best to put a little bit of Mod Podge because it is Dollar Tree and I was afraid that it may not stick over time. So I just went over that whole little bottom part with my Mod Podge. Also, I thought that it might knock down some of that gloss off of that vinyl. But side note, it didn't do that, just to let you know. So here I am putting it on the top, doing the exact same thing, laying it down, cutting it, and then sanding it. On the Cricut Design Space, I found a decal that says, Merry Christmas, y'all. So I'm going to put that right in the middle. I'm really into the messy bows right now. Not only are they beautiful and rustic in farmhouse, but they're super easy to make for someone that is bow challenged. So I just cut three different ribbon and you cut it in an X formation or you make an X formation with your ribbon and then you just tie it up in the middle. It's so super simple. I've been buying a lot of my little picks at Walmart because they're only 98 cents a piece. And this is two of those. And I'm just going to glue them to the top. And then I take some of the pit berry because we're going to use this as the hanger. And I poke the two little holes back through the top. And we're just going to stick that pit berry through there as the hanger. And then I'm just going to stick my bow right in between these two little Christmas picks. I like to finish off my bows with some type of embellishment, so I stuck a little button right in the middle of it, and it is cute as a button. And then I just took some white chalk paint and kind of flocked it so it would have that snowy effect. I think that this is a good, economical, smart little wreath to use on your front door because it just cost a few dollars to make. And in that case, if it gets destroyed by the weather, it doesn't really matter that much because it didn't cost an arm and a leg to make. So let's jump into number three. The Dollar Tree has these fish bowls in two different sizes. I got a small one and a medium one and I'm gonna take it outside and spray paint it with this Rust-Oleum frosted glass and look how beautiful this turns out. I'm gonna make a little snowman and I'm gonna start off with some of my buttons. I'm gonna use black for his eyes and I found two matching buttons and those are gonna be his eyes and then I'm gonna make his little mouth with the buttons also and I used five buttons that were all the same. Now, the fish bowl snowman from Dollar Tree is no new thing, but I've never made one before, so I'm going to try my hand at it. I wasn't sure what to make the nose out of, 
but I thought, I can probably at least try to draw a carrot, okay? I'm not a good artist. But I just made a little carrot nose, and then I'm going to use my Arteza orange color. I love the Arteza. They're very vibrant. And I just colored on a little carrot nose to the best of my ability. <laughs> I add three of the larger buttons to his little belly. I'm going to use two strings of fairy lights that were sent to me by a company called On For You. I'm going to leave them in the description link um, in case you want some for yourself. And I'm going to put one whole string in the top and one string in the bottom. There are 20 lights on each strand so it gave a beautiful warm glow. I found this little hat at the Dollar General. It still was only a dollar, and I'm just going to glue it to the top of my little snowman. And then I had a perfectly matching ribbon, and I thought this is gonna be absolutely gorgeous for his scarf. So I just wrapped this little ribbon around his neck, and voila, you have the scarf. I've got one of these small red bells that I'm going to stick on his hat because it seemed like it just needed something. And then I added another bell down where the little scarf comes together and some berries. And then I also have this cute little embellishment that came from Walmart off of one of their ornaments. And I'm just going to add that right there where the scarf comes together too because it perfectly matched his little hat. Now, my snowman is going to sit on one of those trays that comes from the Dollar Tree. It's covered up right now. It's hard to see, but it was gold. I took it outside and spray painted it white. I put a piece of floral foam in the middle, and I just start attaching different picks from Amazon that I had ordered, and those are linked in the description box below, by the way. I also added another set of those fairy lights because I like everything to be lit up and beautiful. I added some pine cones from my yard, and I added a couple of little bottle brushes that comes from the Dollar Tree also, and some red and white pit berries that come from one of my subscribers. I added some of that fake fluffy snow too, and I did put some inside the head and the body of the snowman also. And now it's time to stick him right up on the top but I can't glue him down because remember, I do have to stick those lights in there and turn them off and on. So I just straightened up my last little bits and pieces of Frosty the Snowman and he is finished and I think he's adorable. Well, we're already going into DIY 4. I got one of these gather signs that come from the Dollar Tree. And at first, I tried to cut around that area that says gather. And then I just realized it wasn't going to work. So I just pulled that whole front piece off. And I'm measuring out to see how I need to cut. Because we're going to use some Dollar Tree wrapping paper for the backdrop of this picture. So I simply just cut my wrapping paper to the size that I needed, and then I painted everything on that frame black, the front side, back side, inside, outside. And then my little piece of wrapping paper is going to fit down in there perfectly. So I used some glue stick and it just adhered nicely. Now I'm gonna take this tumbling tower block and I painted it black because we're gonna use it to have a little deer standing on it. And I'm gonna use one of those little small deer that comes to in a package from Dollar Tree. So I just glue the little block down and glue her on top of the block. Then I take one of the cards that come in my cardstock package from Amazon and it had a cute little saying on it. It says, be glad and be of good cheer for Christmas comes but once a year. And I glued that right to the top with a couple small beads of glue. 
Now I have some of this diamond wrap that was sent to me by Totally Dazzled, and I'm just gonna use two of the little strands to glue all around my little saying so that it will stand out on the picture. I'm gonna take two of the little bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree and just glue them one on each side of the little dough. Then I take one of my little pre-made ribbons from the Walmart and I'm just gonna stick that at the top of my picture. To embellish my bow, right in the center, I put two little Christmas light decorations. I still felt like this picture needed something, so I found some little half beads that I had in my stash and I already had them painted black and I'm just gonna put one on each of the corners of that little Christmas saying. Wow, we're already on our last DIY. Here goes number five. I hope that you found all these DIYs are super easy to recreate, but this one especially is. I have one of those little sleighs from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna give it one coat of white chalk paint after I sand it down with my sanding sponge. I made sure that I got every little nook and cranny. And then I had already cut out this piece of paper. This is the snowman that everybody absolutely loved off of my thumbnail. I thought I had got it off of Canva, but it's actually pixabay.com. I'm gonna leave that in the description box below. We are going to make a water slide decal. Now we've done this in the past before, but I'm gonna leave the information in the description box. All you have to do is order the special paper. It's very cheap. And you print whatever image off of your printer, which I picked the snowman. I'm submerging it in the water for only 60 seconds, and then you pull it away from the backing and it just lays right down on that piece of paper. And then I'm drying it with a little towel. When everything was dry, I decided to do just a little bit of the Waverly Antique Wax and distress this, so I go all the way around it and then I wipe off the excess with a towel. I got a little pack of pine cones from the Dollar Tree and it also had like a little sprig of pine and some berries in there and I just kind of put all that together to make a very small little pick and I put that on my sled. And in my stash, I found this stamp that said Joy. So I stamped that across the top, and then I'm gonna take one of my little pre-made plaid bows that come from Walmart and stick that up in the upper hand corner, and then embellish that with a little bell. to do this Kirkland's Merry Little Christmas sign. I started off with an 11 by 17 canvas frame and I'm going to take the staples out and the canvas off of the front. So I simply flipped it over and I cut on the outside of the staples with my X-Acto knife and then I'm going to pull that canvas right off. I went out to the garage and I grabbed a couple of these cedar slats that we had out in our wood pile. They're about the size and thickness of a ruler, which is exactly what I needed. I cut them down to 15 inches and all I'm gonna do is lay these out. I want that lighter, prettier side on the bottom. That's the part you're gonna see. And I just used my hot glue gun to glue each one of these down. Super easy. Talk about rustic. These things came off of the back of an old bench <laughs> and they were really rough, but hey, they make for some gorgeous wood, y'all. I take my white home decor chalk paint in the color white Adirondack and I'm just going to give this one really good full coat. I made sure to get every nook and cranny, inside, outside, upside, downside, you know the drill. Then I went over to my Cricut and I pulled off the stencil. I'm gonna use the Oracle Blue Vinyl Stencil 651 and I made these little trees on the bottom. It was the closest I could find, but I actually liked the way it turned out better. And then I did the stencil part that says, Merry Little Christmas. 
I used the font called Another Typewriter because it matched the font perfectly from the picture that I saw off Kirkland's. I just pulled it out and weeded everything. Guys, this was the very first time that I've ever used the stencil vinyl. I've always just made the vinyl and used it, but I found it was very easy to make your own stencils, and so I see this in my future a lot. So I just laid my stuff down the way that I wanted it. I kind of centered the trees down on the bottom, and then the Merry Little Christmas goes up to the upper left-hand side, just like it did in the Kirkland's picture. I used my Waverly Crimson Chalk Paint, and I gave it one good full over coat. And I was very careful to paint away from the stencils. You don't want to push that paint up under the stencil. You kind of go away from that stencil. I always really fast forward over these parts, just like painting or whatnot, because everybody knows how to do that. Um, but I figured that I would show you this little part because it's how I did the stencil. So you just paint over the top of it, but you're very careful not to push that paint underneath. Here comes the best part where you pull that stencil up and it just makes the most beautiful, crisp picture. Look how white and gorgeous and crisp that is. Last Christmas, I had bought a pack of wreaths off of Amazon. They came in a pack of 12. It's these little grapevine wreaths. Aren't they cute? Now, the green that's around it is just one of those little green pieces that comes from the Dollar Tree. There's like 12 of them in the package. And I just wrapped it around there to make it look like a little wreath. And then I'm just simply going to take a couple little pieces of berries from a little pick that I have and I just kind of pull about three berries off at a time and just glue them down and I have a little wooden reindeer piece that I got from a package from Walmart there's four different ornaments in the package and there's like a total of 20 and I'm just gonna paint him he did have a little hole where, you know, you can hang him up as an ornament, and I just filled that in, and I used the antique Waverly wax and put some on and then just wiped it off with a baby wipe. I'm just going to glue him right down on the side of that wreath because I felt like it needed a little something. Then I'm just going to glue that wreath right to the side. It didn't have it in the picture at Kirkland's, but I thought it just seemed kind of plain not to have that. Now I'm just gonna take my Arteza chalk paint markers and I just use that to go around that wreath. It's white and so I'm just making, putting like fake snow on it and any little spots in my picture where it needed like a touch up of white because there are one or two tiny little spots where that red paint kind of bled and all I'm gonna do is touch that up and I'm gonna go around my little reindeer and highlight him with that white marker because it makes him stand out. And that's all, guys. I actually like my version better than the Kirkland's version. And that little hole that is over the third Christmas tree is just a hole in the wood. Let's go into DIY number two, which is a pine and snowy berry picture arrangement. I started out with this picture that I had purchased from Goodwill, and it's brown. So we're going to give it a good coat of this sheepskin by Home Decor, which is kind of like an ivory color. It's an off-white. After I gave it one good coat, I was like, why am I sitting here painting this? I should have just took it outside and gave it a good spray paint. So that's exactly what I did after the first coat because it was going to take a couple of coats to cover up that dark brown color. So, I took it outside and I used my Rust-Oleum Times 2 Ultra Matte White Spray Paint and it came out beautiful. At first, I did want to do an ivory color, but once I put the white on there, it's unmistakably Christmas and it's beautiful. And I got down inside there just a little bit. You're never going to see down in there, but you might just a little bit. So, at this point, I just put a different, some different florals in there. This is actually some florals from some old plants that I had. 
And then the picks are some picks that I purchased off of Amazon last Christmas. They're pine picks. And then these little white and red berries are compliments of Miss Rita, one of my subscribers. She sent me a box of goodies, and it had a ton of these little berry picks in there. And I absolutely love these, especially at Christmas time. Come on. And I've got these red berries that have, like, pine cones on them. It's really just some extra picks that I had laying around the house. But they absolutely matched the ones that was in the Kirkland's picture so i put them in there i just fooled around with everything to try to figure out the arrangement that i wanted and at first i put these darker red berries almost a maroon color but i changed those out in a minute now you know i had to put my crafty kathy touch on there and i pulled up a picture of this truck off of pixabay and I'm using my Hippo water slide papers, which I love because you can make any image a decal. So what I did was I put it in the water for 60 seconds. Then I wet my little surface there and I just did the water slide where you pull the paper out from under it and it's a perfect little decal of the truck. I liked the one from Kirkland's, but I felt that it was really plain because it was just a white picture with the berries and the pine in there. And I thought, hmm, I've got to put a little Kathiness into this, you know? So I took um, and just wiped off any excess water and then I started changing the berries out. Remember I told you I didn't really like those maroon colored berries because they were too dark for me. They didn't match the truck, so I put some brighter red ones in. And I even added like a little cotton pick. Then I decided to take some twine and go around the bottom of this picture two times. And then I also went around the top of it two times because it just gave it that little extra something something that Kathy projects have to have. I cannot have just plain projects. And don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking the Kirkland's one, but like I said, I had to just Kathy it up a little bit, okay? So then I just burn off all the little fuzzies. And then I had a little wooden snowflake that came out of um, some little snowflakes and things, little ornaments that I had purchased off of Etsy. They're very small. They go great for different types of embellishments. It's just tiny. All I did was just glue this right underneath that twine and it almost looked like it was hanging off of it like a beaded necklace. And here's my version. I really love these hippo water slide decals since I found them because you can put that little red truck which everybody seems to love on anything. Molly, I know that you're loving this one, girl. Let's go into DIY number three. This one was super easy. Christmas begins with Christ and I couldn't agree more. So, all I had was three pieces of like extra wood. Now, I had purchased a box of all these different pieces of wood. I think they kind of came from kids blocks or something. It's been years and I didn't know what to do with it. Well, guess what? I found something to do with it. So I used my crimson color by Waverly and I just gave it one good coat and that's the top block. And then I dried it and set it aside. I sand down the second block, which is going to be white, and I use my home decor white Adirondack, and I give it one good coat of that. And then I do the same, dry it, and set it to the side. Then for the bottom block, all I had was um, acrylic paint, so I used Apple Barrel's color called Christmas Green, and it took about three coats to actually get it covered. You just have to make sure that you dry it all the way between each coat. I purchased an SVG off of Etsy and it was only 95 cents of this little nativity scene and I printed it out on my Cricut and we're going to place that on the very top block just like in the picture of the Kirkland's version. It came off so pretty and crisp. And then for the second block we have red color and it says Christmas and it is the exact same writing that comes from the Kirkland's version. This one is from the font called Magnolia Sky. 
Then the last part says, begins with Christ, and it is also from Magnolia Sky. Look how beautiful and crisp when it all comes off. Oh, it's so pretty. And this was such an easy project, y'all, for it to be Kirkland's. So I stacked everything up the way that I wanted it. And we're simply just going to glue the blocks together. Then I just sanded off a couple little rough spots that needed to be sanded. Of course, I wanted to do a little Kathy touch to it. And I found these picks at Walmart for just 98 cents. They already have out their Christmas stuff at my local Walmart. And if you'll look, that little reindeer and snow in that just disappeared in the little box, those are the ornaments I was telling you about earlier. So I just took one little sprig of pine on each side and glued it down. And then I took some berries off of that sprig and cut just a couple little berries off of each one and glued those down. It also had a very small pine cone, which I ended up putting on the right hand side on the top of those berries. And I like everything to have a snowy finish. So I took my paintbrush and a little bit of that white Adirondack and just kind of ran it over the pine cone and the pieces of pine to create a snowy look. And here's what we got. This is gorgeous, y'all. This one was probably, out of all of them, my favorite. Let's go into DIY number four. It's going to be another sign that says, The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. These are boards that actually go, it's wood that actually goes on the wall, and they were 48 inches long, so I cut them in half because the actual sign was a 14 by 24. Mine just so happens to be a 16 by 24. So what I did was cut three of those boards in half to make them 24 long. And I simply just cut off three smaller pieces of wood, which I've got here, and I'm just gluing that down to the back so that I can create a good, solid uh, structure for this sign. And I have an electronic stapler that shoots little brad nails, so I stuck two nails at least in each one of those so that we can have a really good firm foundation to start with. My sign naturally came in this beautiful gray color, and the sign in the picture is more of a brownish color, but I didn't want to touch it. I love this gray color. So what I did was took just a little bit of the antique Waverly wax, and I went all around the perimeter, all around the sides, and just kind of ran it in the center part just ever so slightly to give it a rustic, roughed up look. Then on my Cricut, I used the Smart Vinyl, and I'm using my um, Cricut Explore 3 that Cricut actually sent me. And the first part that I wanted to put down was the word wonderful because it's the very center part of the sign, and we definitely want that to be the main part. The font that I used for the word wonderful was elegant or elegance. I think it was elegant. And then the others, I used another typewriter. That was the version that I used. And then the word, it's the, is just that very first one that pops up called Cricut San, I think. It's just a basic, you know, just small, um, thin letters. It says, it's the. And then the words, most and time of the year are all from the font called another typewriter. You'll see it looks like a big fat typewriter wrote it out. I hope this Christmas music is getting you guys in the mood because it's definitely getting me in the mood. I mean, I was telling you guys before, it's 80 degrees and we're still swimming. But when I listen to Christmas music, I can't help but get excited for the season and tap my toes and sing along. I know that everybody loves Kirkland's, but guys, I hope that you can see from this video how easy it is to recreate their stuff. You don't have to go and spend tons of money on these signs. You can make them yourself. Like this sign here, they're asking $69.99 for. I probably have, I don't know, $6 in this whole sign. 
and the little red sign they were asking 29.99 for it i might have three dollars in that one um the little wood sign that i made the the uh, christ begins with christmas maybe a dollar and two dollars in the picture because that's what i paid for the picture if you want to count the florals let's say five okay i mean everything in this video has been super inexpensive and so easy to make I really hope you guys are getting some good ideas and inspiration. So for me, I had to Kathy this up. I just could not leave it plain like the sign had. So I have this pick that comes from Walmart, and it had an apple on it, which I didn't like because it looked cheap. So I took that one off and put my own apple on that I got from Amazon, and I just stuck that pick on the side, and I added a couple extra pine cones to it. And anything that I talk about that's that i say i got from amazon it's in my amazon store in case y'all are interested all you have to do is go down in the description box and it's down there so i kind of fooled around with the placement of things and added like i said here's the little apple that i added because it looks prettier the other one was just so fakey looking and i added one more pine cone to this one then after that, I just put a little bit of that white Adirondack paint on my little chippy brush and just kind of ran it through all the bristles of that pine pick and over the apple, over the berries, and then over different parts of the sign because, like I said, I like it to have that snowy effect. And this one is complete, guys. Wow, we are headed into DIY number five. And this is going to be our very last one. This one's super, super easy. This one is an ornament. I saw these little pictures on Pinterest that showed different ways that you can make the ornaments. And all it was is a piece of wood. It's just a very small little piece of wood. It's like eight inches long by one inch. Now, I had this little ornament that I had purchased at the thrift store for 50 cents. It already said Santa on it, but we didn't want that. And I painted it with two coats of my Waverly Red Crimson paint. Each ornament had different words, and I picked the word Believe, and I used the font called Candle Mustard. I think it's really pretty. It has that swoosh at the front of the B, and it's so pretty. And I printed that out on my Cricut, and we're just going to place this right down in the center of that red block. Then I just took some of my jute twine that I got from Dollar Tree, and all you have to do is wrap it around the end two times, and then I glued it. Then I pulled enough over so that it would have a spot to hang and wrapped it on the other side two times and glued it down. And that's it to this ornament, guys. This was super easy, super simple, and I'm not kidding you. It took me probably less than five minutes. Now, you could make a ton of these with just small pieces of wood, and you could fill your whole tree within 30 minutes. They had all kinds of Christmassy words. Then I just glued a little wooden Santa hat that I got off of Amazon. I don't have any footage of the Squawk Squad this week, guys, but I do have something that I hope you'll like. Hi, y'all. I'm Pamela Pupkin, and you're about to do Pamela Pupkin's Halloween workout. Woo! This is Alan. All right, come on. Shake off the Skittles. Shake off the Reese's. Shake off those candy corns. Now ride the witch's broom. Ride the witch's broom. Ride the witch's broom. Ride the witch's broom. Squash Satan, kick him in the crotch. Squash Satan, kick him in the crotch. Squash Satan, kick him in the crotch. Kick that Satan in the crotch. Zombies to the left. Zombies to the right. Zombies to the left. Zombies to the right. Who needs bloopers when you ain't got a lick of sense? Hey, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd love for you to subscribe and become a part of our family. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up because it really helps my channel get pushed out there so more people can see me. So let's go into DIY number one. I'm started off with six of those big jumbo size paint stir sticks that you get from Walmart. I'm going to put a scrap piece on the back right here and it's only temporary. It's just to hold it together so that I can stain it. I make sure that everything is lined up correctly right here. 
And all we're gonna do is give it a really quick stain with my Waverly Antique Wax. I'm gonna go over the whole thing with my wax, and then I'm just gonna wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. I put a very light coat of the Ivory Waverly Chalk Paint on after I got everything wiped down with a baby wipe. And I did kind of a wishy-washy coat. That means it's not a full coverage. If you see, I just left a couple little bare spots because it just makes it easier to distress in the end. And now I have this beautiful napkin. Look how pretty this is. And we just wanna cut off one square. I wet my fingers with Mod Podge and then I pull it down to where it's just one ply. Now this one had three plies, so I had to take it all the way down to one. And then I like to just wet the end of a very light, small paintbrush and just go around the edges where I'm wanting to pull it apart. I want nothing except for the picture of the truck and the puppy dogs and the Christmas tree going up the top. So I like to use my fingers to pull it apart. That's why I use the water because I don't like clean edges. I don't like like a perfect square. It just makes it look more natural when it's not. I put my Mod Podge down and we're simply going to lay our picture down on the top of that. And I always start with the middle. I have my saran wrap or plastic wrap already waiting for me. So it's very easy to make that transition because you have to have that plastic wrap if you don't want wrinkles. That saran wrap helps that napkin not stick to your fingers. And I always start off in the center and then I very slowly go, you know, towards this, the edges and then I use my little Mod Podge roller. And like I've told you guys before, you don't even have to have a roller. You can even use like a, you know, cup, like a glass from your kitchen. Just something with that edge on it where you can kind of roll it out, it helps. And I've heard people that said they didn't have any saran wrap on hand, so they can even use a baggie, anything that's plastic, just so that napkin does not stick to your fingers because it will pull it away and mess up your picture quicker than anything. And guys, there's not a single wrinkle in this. After my napkin had 120% dried, I went with my X-Acto knife through the little ridges that are here, you know, like tracing down through there, just to separate that napkin from the edge so it's not sticking there because I want it to have a planked look, you know, like a shiplap look. So what I did is just cut it with my X-Acto knife, but you have to make sure it's 100% dry. If not, it's gonna tear that napkin. Then I went over the top of my whole picture with the Mod Podge. And then I took a piece of cardboard from an Amazon box and I painted it with my Antique Waverly Wax. But I only painted it because I'm gonna put this behind my picture and I don't want you to be able to see that box. I just gave it a real quick coat and then I wiped it off with a baby wipe. Now I don't want the sides of those popsicle sticks rounded like that, so I just took my tin snips and I cut the ends of them off. And this is after I had already used my X-Acto knife, everything was totally dry, and I just pulled the pieces, you know, took the pieces apart and pulled that piece off the back that I told you that we were gonna pop off later. I used that first one that I cut as my example to so I would know exactly where to cut all of my pieces off at. And after I cut, I gave everything a really quick little sanding on the end. After I had everything sanded down and ready to go, I just simply laid everything back the way that I wanted it to go and evened it out so I would know where to glue it down and then I just glued it all down to that piece of cardboard. After I had everything glued back down, I took some of this sheer red ribbon that I purchased at the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna place that right on the very edge because it's not totally even on the edges. So I wanted to hide the edge, and I laid that sheer ribbon down, and then I took that beautiful, like lace looking ribbon from the Dollar Tree and just laid that right over that sheer ribbon and oh my gosh, it was so pretty.
My biggest dilemma was trying to figure out what to put on the top of this. I had first put these two stems and I didn't really care much for the way it went. And this is how the crafts evolve as you go along. So here we're just making a little messy bow and all you do is take a bunch of different types of ribbon. You make an X formation and you tie it in the center. Now I knew I wanted the messy bow on the top and I was like, it just doesn't look right with this. So I finally settled in with this gorgeous, gorgeous red ribbon. It's really thick, it's like two and a half inches thick. And all I did was wrap it over a couple of times and I'm just gonna pinch it in the middle to make a simple bow. Now I did this two times and pinched those two pieces together to make one larger bow. Then I just took some jute twine and tied it in the middle I had already pulled that first pick off that I didn't like, and then I took this eucalyptus stem that you get from Walmart. I laid one piece over to the side, and look at this beautiful pick that I got from Walmart. They're $1.48. It has this old rusted bell on it, and I absolutely love it. It's my favorite pick that Walmart has. And I'm just gonna lay that over the top of that eucalyptus, we're gluing everything down, and then I'm going to put that large red bow kind of off to the side. I still just was not satisfied with the way this looks, so I was like, what am I going to do? And I started playing around, and I laid that messy bow right on the top of that great big bow, and I was like, that's it. That's the look that I was going for. That's how these things evolve. Sometimes one thing doesn't work, but another thing will. Now here, I am just dovetailing the ends of my ribbon. I took about 20 of my beads that I get from Amazon, and I just put them on a string of jute. I did not paint them or stain them or anything. I wanted them plain the way they were. I tied two simple knots in that. We're gonna flip our sign over, and we're going to glue those knots down, plus put a piece of masking tape, and that is what's gonna make our hanger. And that's all for this sign. I was so pleasantly surprised with this and I think it came out gorgeous. For DIY number two, I had purchased these paint stir sticks off of Amazon. Now they don't have that little curvy top, which I liked. So you get a whole 12 inches of just a straight stick. Okay, so I took two of them and I'm just going to go down and I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm going to glue one up. We're gonna make a Christmas tree. Now I started off with 12 inches and then I'm gonna go up to 11 inches, 10 inches, nine, and I go all the way up to one inch to form a Christmas tree. This one was super simple. I just measured out and I just cut with my little miter shears each size. And like I said, I started off at 12 at the bottom. I went all the way up at one. I took one of these Dollar Tree little cutout stars and I'm gonna place it at the top and I take my green aged pine paint. It's a primer and a paint, and I'm going to paint this green. This is a folk art acrylic paint, but with that primer in there, I felt like it only needed one coat. And Platt had sent me this paint called Treasured Gold, and it is a gold color. It's very vibrant. I painted my star with that. And I'm gonna take my antique Waverly wax and just do the trunk of the tree. I'm gonna apply it and wipe it off with that baby wipe. I wanted my tree to look kind of rustic and farmhouse, so I just kind of used my little uh, distressing brush and went all over this tree with my Waverly antique wax. I got some lights from the Dollar Tree that are these gorgeous stars. I think they're so pretty, and I just wrapped it up around the tree in a motion like, uh, like you would put tinsel on, you know? And then I just taped that little battery pack to the back. Now, I put two of my tumbling tower blocks together because we're gonna put this in the front and the back of that trunk to make it stand up. 
and I just went over it just very lightly with my antique wax. I put some on a baby wipe and wiped it on and back off. I glued two of those blocks to the front of the tree and two to the back so it would be freestanding. And then I took my Mod Podge and I went over these words that says peace from the Dollar Tree. They say if you put the Mod Podge over it, it will help paint stick. And then I went over it with my white Waverly chalk paint. Then when it was fully dry, I went over it with my Mod Podge once again, and we're going to put some of this Dollar Tree faux snow on that word, and it turned out so pretty. I placed the word peace kind of sideways on my sign, the same way that those lights go in an upward motion. Then I took a little bit more Mod Podge and put it over the word once again and added a little bit more faux snow. Then I took my Mod Podge along the sides of the tree, along the little ledges, and added some faux snow because it kind of looked like the snow had fallen on the tree. This one was really easy to make and turned out so beautiful and I wanted it to be kind of minimal like this and I love the way it looks. With DIY number three, I took some more of those jumbo size paint sticks that come from the Walmart. I took about six or seven of them and we soaked them fully in water for about 15 minutes. This one came about totally by accident, but I'm so happy that it did. My husband was fooling around and started kind of whittling at one of these wood sticks and we noticed that when you flipped it off and you can put those sticks together it made the prettiest little christmas tree and you can also take one stick and just make your cuts in it to make it look like a little christmas tree whittling is an old world country craft that you don't ever hear of anymore but us country folk and mountain folk definitely know about it you just take a piece of wood, any kind of wood, and you go in a down motion and kind of flip it out. But look, when you flip it out at those curls, how beautiful those are. And when you put them together, it makes the cutest little tree. So I got the idea to take this shadow box that I picked up at the thrift store for a buck, and we're gonna place a piece of paper down over it. And I picked my gray paper that has the snowflakes on it. It was just shy of the size of the back of this box, so what I did was just cut off kind of little odds and ends and put it together with my glue stick so you could make it fit and you'll never see any lines in it. I like to get little wood pieces off of Etsy and I found this cute little barn. Look how tiny that is and it was only like 50 cents. Now I'm going to paint it red and I'm using this Waverly color called lacquer. A lot of people say they can't find this and I only found it one time but it is a darker red than that the crimson you know. So I just painted the bottom part of my barn with the red. I'm painting the top part brown with my antique Waverly wax. I'm going to wipe it off with a baby wipe and then I just use that baby wipe to color two of my trees. And I want you to look how cute these trees are. This is what I was talking about where you just make a point and then you make little cuts all in it and you can make any kind of shape and size to your little tree. I did two of them brown and the other two I painted with that aged pine by Folk Art. Then I pulled out my black slick paint. I absolutely love my slick paint. It reminds me of the puffy paints from the 80s. And anything that you want to highlight, which I highlighted some things black, like around the barn. And then I used my white uh, slick paint to go around like the little X's in the doors. Anything that you want to highlight, it absolutely makes it beautiful. Now, I have this in my Amazon cart in case you guys want it. That's where I purchased it at, and I got like five different colors. I went all over my little trees with my white slick paint to make it look like snow had just fallen freshly on the top of it. And I didn't forget my barn because snow's going to fall on that too. 
I went and got some of these stickers. Now these came in that pack of cardstock that I get from Amazon and I picked the one that said Merry Christmas. And I always start off in the middle of my stickers because it just makes it easier to place it right. I put the back back in my little shadow box and I added a little string of my favorite fairy lights that I had got from On For You and those are in my Amazon cart too. And then I just placed one of my little pre-made bows up in the corner and then I thought I'm going to stick a little pine cone in the middle and she's done. I want you to look at the detail in these trees, how adorable they are. You can see every single cut. All right, guys, let's swing into number four. I have three of the five gallon paint stir sticks and I have them cut in a small, medium, and large, like at different lengths. And I'm just gonna paint each one all around, inside, outside, upside, downside, with my white Waverly chalk paint. Then I took the other piece that I had and I cut it just in half and I'm going to paint it with my mineral Waverly chalk paint. Now what we're doing is making a family of snowman and I take daddy snowman and just a little scrap piece of fabric to make him a toboggan. I rolled the front of it up and then I'm just going to wrap it around and I'm going to glue that in the back. Then I cut off the little bit of excess that I had and I went up about halfway and I tied my jute twine so we can tie his little toboggan together and I decided to cut just a little bit off the top because I'm going to cut little strips in it to kind of make it flip out. Then I wanted to make like a little cuff on the top of his toboggan so I just used a little spare piece of yarn, cut a piece of it off and glued it right to the top. Now for Mama Snowman, I wanted her to have one of those Russian style hats that are those big boofy hats. And so I just took that piece of yarn and just kind of wrapped it in a circle up at the top. I cut a piece of white fluffy yarn to make it a little ball on the top. And for the little baby, I did the same thing that I did with the daddies. I just cut off a piece of scarf that I got from the Dollar Tree. I made a little cuff in the front. I wrapped it around and glued it in the back, cut off the excess, and then I went about halfway up, took my jute twine, and I tied it. And now we're going to make another little fluffy white ball in the very top of his, just like I did for the moms. So I cut another little piece of that fabric off and just stuck it right on the top. I wanted the whole family to have like some little embellishment on their little toboggan. So I took just a tiny little piece of pine and I'm going to stick it on mama's first. And then I took two little berries from these pick berries and we're just going to stick them on there. Then I took one of those tiny little light bulbs that I bought at Hobby Lobby a few months back and I didn't know what to do with it. They look like the old style 80s light bulbs and I just stuck that on her hat. I kind of did the same thing for the babies. I've got him a little sprig of the pine. And since he's a little boy, I just stuck a tiny little pine cone in there. And then for the dad, I wanted his to kind of look manly. So all he has is just a little sprig of pine. Now, I took three of those tiny little shavings where we had sliced those trees up a while ago. And these are going to be their noses. And I just used my Arteza paint pen to color each one orange. So I started putting together their faces and I started off with giving each one their little noses. I took my black slick paint to make their little eyes. Now I am no artist. So with the daddy, I just made him little dots for the eyes and then his mouth. Now with the babies, I wanted him to have these big, beautiful, huge eyes, you know, like a little baby. And then with the mama, I wanted her to have kind of like 
like she's got makeup on or kind of like, you know, almond type eyes. And so that was how I put together their little eyes. And then I took my white paint from my slick paint and just made little dots like the light glistening off their eyes. Then to make my snowman freestanding, I took those two paint sticks that I painted mineral and I glued each one of them with one of those in the front and in the back. I put baby in the middle and mama and dad on the sides. I got some of those cedar picks that I had purchased off of Amazon and I stuck one sideways and then one going the opposite way. I didn't want too much, but I wanted a little something down beneath them. And then I put two pine cones, very small ones from off a pick from Walmart, just down in the middle. And then I felt like they needed a scarf. So I just cut off a piece of each one's material that I had made their hat with and I just wrapped it around their neck. Then I took this white eucalyptus that I had got at the Dollar Tree and I just put a couple sprigs on each side and I added a few little bells and I took a pick of red berries that I had got from Dollar Tree, I believe, and I just put a few little rogue berries here and there. And then I took one of the bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree and stuck it in behind and in between the daddy and the baby. And you can't have a tree without a star, so I put the star on the top of my tree. And I have some tiny little snowflake ornaments that I got at Dollar Tree, and I just kind of put them on the front of the scene. And that's all for this sweet little snowman family. Our last one is definitely my favorite. We're gonna do a reverse canvas and we're gonna make a Santa sign. I believe that this is a 12 by 12. So what I do is go on the outside of the staples with my knife and then I'm just gonna pull my canvas away. Now, sometimes when you're pulling that canvas away, you may pull the picture apart there, but all you do is put a little bit of glue in there and stick it right back together. And it's just as good as new. We're gonna take our antique Waverly Wax and we're gonna go all around our picture frame, inside and out, front and back, and we are just gonna wipe it off with a baby wipe. It is a 12 by 12 frame because I used 12 of these paint stir sticks and each one of them is an inch long. So that's how I know. Now I took my white Waverly paint and we're just gonna paint each one of these white. Then I took my picture frame and I'm just gonna give it a quick little sanding and then I'm just gonna start taking my sticks and gluing those down to my frame. It's unbelievable how easy this is for how beautiful that it turns out. So when I had everything glued down, I took this bag that actually had a Santa picture that is separate from the bag. They had it like uh, they had that foam tape on it holding the picture on and it's a round picture. So I just took that picture up and I very lightly glued it to the middle of my sign. This Santa bag is from the Dollar Tree, believe it or not. Then I took six of those teeny weeny little bottle brushes and I'm going to glue three on each side of the Santa down at the bottom. And then I'm gonna take my little embellishments that I get from Amazon. It's those tiny picks that you guys just love. And I'm just gonna place them kind of going in opposite directions. I took a little bit of white chalk paint and I'm just gonna kind of dab it in and out in those pine cones on the trees. And then I'm gonna go all the way around the picture kind of like I'm dry brushing it. Then I very, very lightly sanded it with my little sanding sponge. Then I took one of those little embossing tools that you get from the Dollar Tree, and it just has like a little tip on it. And this is sped up really, really fast, so it shows you how slow I went. There was a ring around the Santa, and I used my black chalkboard paint to go all the way around that ring to highlight him. 
And then I used some black chalk paint and that little embossing tool to go in between each of these planks so that they would really stand out and be seen. And that was it for my Santa Claus. He was probably one of the easiest projects and he turned out to be the prettiest or he's my favorite. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and did get some good inspiration. Now, don't forget to give me those thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if you stuck around all the way till the end of this video, thank you so much. I love you guys. Don't forget the bloopers. I could just hear the people at the Walmart right now. That large lady that stays in the craft aisle all the time is heading to the paint stick section again. Stop her now! <laughs> like, you gonna stand in my way? I will eat you guys! I mean, come on! Anywho, but just in case you have never been to my channel before and you don't know what the silly theme song is, let me tell you. So, because I didn't have a truckload of bloopers for this week, I figured I'd show you a little video of what my family Christmas is like. I absolutely love Christmas when all my Tennessee family comes over to my house to visit. Well, I was hoping that at least I could come over to my cousin Kathy's house and that way I could get away from Gladys for a little bit, but that didn't work, did it? Ain't Ethel? I don't understand why you and Gladys can't just get along. I mean, all y'all do is fight. You've lived together for a long time. You ought to be over it by now. I mean, good Lord. You in your 80s. You figure one of you's gonna take a dirt nap real soon. So you might as well get over it. I can only hope that it's Ethel that goes first. Because good Lord knows I'm still young and beautiful. I've got things I've got to do. <laughs> you kind of make me laugh. Y'all are so silly. Boy, y'all got to be the smartest people in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, Frank drug me out here. I didn't want to get out of the bed, but figured I might as well come and see my kinfolk up the mountain ways. Now, look, if y'all can't get along and act like decent humans, then I'm not coming back up here to this place because... All we do at Christmas time is sit around and fight. Yeah, we never fought till Gladys stole my sixth husband, Jimmy Joe. Bobby Joe and JoJo's daddy. But now they're separated, so that's what you get, Gladys. I never wanted your old husband, Ethel. He came to me. It's not my fault that I'm gorgeous in my youth. I just love you guys so much. Every single Christmas is like this, and it just tops my year. <laughs> I love it here. I love living on this mountain, and I love my family. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, shut you blabbing, Bobby Joe. If you want to know who your real daddy is, come to me when this garbage is over with. Ah. All right, guys, this is my executive producer, and you can see he likes to steal the spotlight. Now, are you ready to sing our silly little theme song so we can let these people watch our video? Okay. Here on our channel, we got love and laughs and DIYs. 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 Yeah. You're so lovely. <laughs>